Okay, well I'm slowly getting the new lab set up in our new home. Um, have all the equipment and bench in place. I managed to find which box this old setup was in that we were um, having a look at before of Mike's. Unlike the other guys, I'm using mechanical relays uh, just because I think they're more reliable. Nothing to burn out. They will handle 30 amps each and our 24 volt relays. Uh, of course my little timer kit which you can buy in a box in parts and just put together yourself. The little battery here is running the timer kit. Uh, that is completely isolated from the system. And because of the mechanical relay here and those two relays there. While it's not running, of course the two relays are open and when it runs it will switch the relays on off opposite to each other. The duty cycle for each relay and the time is all adjustable on our board by the two little pots there and by the jumper clips. <coughs> we can adjust uh, a lot of things with this board which is quite handy. So we'll start at the beginning. I have my power supply here set on 25.8 volts. That is going directly to the 24 volt battery bank, which is at 25.84 volts. Uh, from the battery bank, I'm going through this isolation transformer, which you would have seen before. I'm just using it so as I can hook both of my scope probes up to the system and I have to isolate them because they share a common ground unfortunately between the two channels. This has a resistance of about 0.3 ohms very low and uh, very thick cable so there'll be very little loss there. We come out of our isolation transformer go through the block into this red lead which is on this cell here. This is the positive cell when the 24 volt system comes into play. So it comes through this cell if we use conventional current flow through this cell across to this cell comes out of this cell which is our white wire goes into this wire here which goes back to the positive side of our 12 volt battery and then out of the 12 volt battery we follow our common ground to the two relays so the relays just like the MOSFETs are switching the ground and not the active so although we have 24 volts here if we're saying 24 volts 12 volts we have 24 volts but of course we have to take away this 12 volts because it's positive into positive. So our potential across these two cells is still really 12 volts and that is how that battery there is able to charge up depending on the um, frequency and also depending on the duty cycle of work that that battery is doing. And all my meters are turning off they do. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, 12.65 in that battery. Now I've got the duty cycle at the moment set to about 55 on the 24 volt side and 45 on the 12 because this battery was pretty flat. Our scope, the blue channel, is hooked across this resistor. 11 watt 18 ohm resistor and that resistor there goes across those two perforated plates which are insulated from the cells via strips of foam rubber uh, this is purely to show us what happens with this cell when it is switched off this cell then becomes uh, positive and the rear cell becomes negative on the 12 volt side on the 24 volt side, this cell is the positive, that cell is the negative, the one at the back is off. So 
so um, that's how this system works. As you can see, the cell that switches from negative to positive is the one that is going very brown very fast. This one is slightly brown behind the plate because I didn't take the perforator plate off and clean it. And I've actually swapped these two wires over for a short time to see if it made any difference to the system. But as you can see, recently clean on that side, whereas that one within five minutes has gone very brown. The one at the back, which is our oxygen producer, um, sorry, hydrogen producer, stays very clean. So once again, 24 volt side, the cell on the right is your positive, the cell on the left is a negative. 12 volt side, the cell on the left is the positive and the cell on the back is the negative. Um, and basically all we're doing is seeing or looking at the cell on the right and what it does when it is switched off. All three cells are of equal length and of equal distance so the resistance between all three cells is the same. The two perforated plates are the two um, bits of stainless that are closest to each other in the system. So um, the resistance between the two plates should be uh, less but as it has holes in it less surface area it is probably going to be more okay so what we're going to do now is we'll start the system up um, and like I said we use our little battery here to run the timer which doesn't draw much power purely to isolate the front side of the timer from the system okay so it's ticking away and you'll see how current draws all over the place Voltage on the battery is reasonably stable. The 12 volt battery is jumping all over the place. Um, there's not much I can do about that. Okay, so we have a look here. And I don't know if you can see that, but you can actually see the cells pulsing when the switching is taking place. Quite interesting. <coughs> this cell here, of course, because it goes from negative to positive, will be making both hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, so what we want to have a look at is um, this cell here mainly what happens when it switches off. If we look at the scope, oh, and let's just turn this up off too. What I'll do is uh, I'll freeze that once the refresh line goes through. Okay, so our yellow trace, which is across our isolation transformer, that is only to tell me when the 24 volt side is on and a current is being drawn from my power supply. I have lifted the level up two divisions just to get the yellow and blue separate from each other. We're on 5 volt divisions on both channel 1 and channel 2 and 250 milliseconds on our time divisions. The first thing I noticed when I was looking at this is when the 24 volt side switches off rather than it coming back to zero volts we have a current going in the opposite direction for some reason which is probably why that's jumping all over the place um, the second thing we're looking at of course when our 24 volt side switches off it should go to zero but it doesn't for some reason it goes in reverse we can see our 12 volt side is on which here we can see for some reason we have um, a voltage across our resistor 
that is um, indicating that the cell that is actually switched off has a negative potential for some reason. And like I said at the start, the cells are all equal length, equal distance apart. So resistance between this cell and this cell and the back cell and this cell should be the same. So I don't understand why this one has a negative potential when it is open to the rest of the circuit and the resistances are the same between each cell. So to check that, we can simply disconnect this cell from the system, stop it working altogether, and uh, we can see what happens with this negative side of our uh, voltage across that resistor. So I'm simply going to pull the wire out so that that cell is not operational. Now if it was the resistance between the back cell and this cell that was giving us our um, negative potential, because this one is positive on the 12 volt side, we still should have that voltage across the resistor. And if I unfreeze it, we can see we indeed do, but it is a lot less. Which is quite interesting. So um, that's the current um, going through the resistance of the water from the rear cell to that now non-operational cell that is giving us our voltage across the resistor. Back up. Okay. You can see when that cell has been operating and switches off, we have a far higher potential across that resistor. So um, I'm not sure if that cell is just acting. Well, the plate is acting as the uh, negative side of a capacitor and the tube itself the positive side. But even so, that tube is still open from the system when it switches to the 12 volt side, which is when we get our negative potential across that plate and a positive potential across that plate. And um, I still don't understand as to why the switching cell goes really brown. I'm not a chemist, so I'm not really having much of an uh, idea as to why it's doing that. My electrolyte is just tap water and KOH. None of the uh, vinegar and fancy stuff that uh, Mike talks about. Um, I just found it interesting that we can get uh, this plate here to have a negative potential when that cell becomes open from the system. And we are getting a bit from the rear cell which is negative coming across to this one but as you've seen it is not as great until this cell starts working. really know about that one. Interesting. The other thing that I found interesting is in regards to this coil. Um, most of you will know that the coil actually has a ring magnet from a large speaker as the core. Haven't found any special effects having a uh, magnet in there instead of a standard core until now disconnect the system so um, now it's all stable um, some power there because we're charging the batteries back up but we can switch the uh, stuff off turn the power supply off um, disconnect the power 
on the batteries into the coil. The coil is now open. Um, and for some reason, I still have 1.8 volts across that coil. Even though it's um, isolated from the system altogether. So I don't know why I have 1.8 volts across the coil. Interesting. Um, so that's it for the time being. Things I've found with this, having a uh, closer look is pretty good now that we have our two channel scope. So um, we'll see where we go from here. And that is my simple setup, and that's what I have to show so far. So, yeah, a bit of a curiosity as to uh, what this cell is actually doing when it's switching off. And it'll still be able to produce a uh, negative voltage, or the, uh, become the negative potential of our voltage across that resistor. And the fact that uh, I still have 1.6 to 1.8 volts across this here uh, coil that's not hooked to anything. Other than one wire, and of course we can't get a voltage out of one wire. Alright, cheers guys, and uh, good luck with the uh, project in the future.